So, one of the first properties of Kellogg, and you probably know some of these already, but we're just going to kind of re-emphasize them. Opposite sides are parallel. That's the big one. That's what makes a parallelism a parallelism. Opposite sides are parallel. So a lot of times you'll see them marked this way. Okay. Um, one pair of sides will have a single arrow on it, and the other sides, the other pair, will have two arrows on it. Okay. That means that the top and the bottom are parallel to each other, and the sides are also parallel, but Obviously, they're <coughs> different parallel, different sets of parallel lots. Okay. Um, now, in addition to being parallel, those opposite sides are congruent, meaning they have the same measure. So you'll see that mark with a straight vertical line for those sides, and then you'll have uh, like two horizontal lines for these these sides. So, for example, um, if this side up here, if I told you that it was 8 meters, then you would also know, if it's a parallelogram, that this bottom side is 8 meters. Uh, similarly, if I said that this side was 10 meters, then you could also say that the left side was 10 meters. Okay? Opposite sides are congruent. In addition to the opposite sides being congruent, opposite angles are congruent. And this has to do with the whole parallel line idea. Um, so this top right corner is congruent to the bottom left corner. And they look like that uh, for the most part, but not always are the pictures on the scale. Uh, so the top left corner is congruent to the bottom right corner. Opposite meaning kind of across from each other. Uh, opposite angles are congruent. Um, and in addition to that, when you have a quadrilateral or four-sided figure, all the angles um, sum to uh, 360 degrees. Okay, all the angles sum to 360 degrees. So when we add them all up, we get 360 degrees. So for example, if I told you that this angle was 110 degrees, and I told you that was a parallelogram, that is the only angle I would have to give you, and you should be able to figure out all the other angles from that. Since that one's 110 degrees, then its opposite angle is 110 degrees. Right now we're at 220 degrees, so that means we have 140 degrees left. So split between two congruent angles, those would both be 70 degrees. Okay. Now going off of that example, let's look at the next uh, relationship there. Consecutive angles are complementary. Now, if something's consecutive, that means it goes in order. So it doesn't matter where we start. Um, the next angle, as we rotate around the figure, those two angles be supplementary. So let me just use the measures from this previous one. So if I start at the top left, and I know that's 110 degrees, because of this property, I can go ahead and label this next angle as 70 degrees. These two angles are consecutive. One, two, I'm going to go ahead and label them. Okay, one, two, three, four. One and two are what we consider consecutive. They go in order. Supplementary means their sum equals 180 degrees. If you've forgotten that, that's what supplementary means. Okay, so then if I look at two and three, if I know two is 70 degrees, then three is 110 degrees because 2 and 3 are consecutive angles. And then if I look at 3 and 4, I know 3 is 110, then 4 is 70. Okay, I know I just, I know that because of the property I just used, but a lot of these properties are very intertwined. Okay, so let's get off the angles for a second and let's look at the diagonals of a parallelogram. Okay, diagonals connect opposite 
uh, vertices. So here's a diagonal. This is the longer diagonal. And here is a diagonal. And one of them's always longer than the other one. Typically, the one that connects the acute angles is longer. Uh, just so you know that. Okay, it says they bisect each other. What does it mean to bisect something in geometry? Well, they cross, but it's a little bit more specific than that. You bisect something, what? Okay, they do make an X. Cut it in half, okay? They cut each other in half. So when these diagonals cross, then it cuts that blue segment in half. The top segment, the part that's above the purple line, is equal to the part that's below the purple line. And the other one's bisected as well. The purple line is cut in half as well. So if I tell you that uh, this part of the diagonal is two, let's say two inches, okay, then because the bi diagonals bisect each other, I know this part of the diagonal is also two inches, so the whole diagonal would be four inches. And then let's say the other one, it's not much longer, let's say that it's three inches. And so this piece is three inches as well. So the whole thing would be six inches long. Okay? <coughs> All right, so uh, 